Yeah. Nuclear Gaza. Nuclear <laughs> Gaza, yeah, yeah. These are just things I remember. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and very bad. Anyway, they, 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 and they said, what about the laugh? And they said, well, look, we'll get you on an aircraft tomorrow. Yeah. <coughs> so I had to stay overnight on the depot. And they, uh, uh, next day they put me on an aircraft with strict instructions not to talk to anybody. They go. And so when we got as far as Bre uh, Melbourne, who should get on the aircraft was uh, Senator Dorothy Tagney. Oh, yes. You know her? Yes. Well, yeah, she'd been my school teacher yeah. in my high school, hadn't she? Yeah. She wouldn't know me. I was dressed as an American. Yes. And a bit simpler. <laughs> yes. And she, she got on the aircraft and sat opposite me. And I didn't, I didn't look at her. So after we got uh, out from there, she said, she said, excuse me, aren't you Arthur Bancroft? I, I didn't hear Miss Tagney. <laughs> she said, what are you doing here? You're a, you're a prisoner of war. I said, no, I'm not. I've just been rescued. She's just come from uh, Parliament and there's nothing at all about it. Yeah. I said, I'm not allowed to talk about it. She said, you can tell me. <laughs> uh, and so <clears throat> she just said, well, somebody meeting you when you get home. I said, I don't know. Anyway. When we she said, don't worry, I'll have a car meeting me and I'll drop you home, I'll take it. Mm. <coughs> anyway, when we landed at the, the old airport at the Maylands, I don't know Yeah, Maylands. Maylands. Who should be there with my parents? Mm. And, uh, and the Red Cross had gone and picked them up and brought them out there. Mm. And apparently Navy had organised that. Mm. And uh, they got me at home and well, was at the uh, home. Mm. And she was just making sure they were going to get a wife. Yeah. <laughs> now, you, there was one little story that you mentioned to me about uh, when you were back in Australia and you were taken to a depot and you passed some people working on a railway. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is after our honeymoon. Oh, so a little bit later. Oh, a little la bit oh, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, before we get... If you would like to just tell us that before I... Talk with Merlo. Yeah, the yeah. Other side of the story. Well, after the uh, yeah, I <coughs> had six weeks leave and mm. all that, so uh, we, uh, I, I was lost. I was lost. Mm. Uh, I, I'd go in and meet Merlo when she knocked off work at five o'clock or whatever it was, but I it wasn't I lost. I knew no. Yeah. All my mates were all I. I uh, all my schoolmates were all away in the war. Yeah. I didn't know anybody. No. It was uh, unusual. Yeah. And uh, anyway, we uh, we cope pretty well. We, uh, we used to go to the pictures and I know, fill in time, didn't we? Uh, and that was a uh, strange feeling to be home and not know anybody. Yes. But they took you back to the Eastern States after this, did they? The, na the Navy did? Yeah, the Navy after... Uh, uh, after we'd been home about six weeks from the other one, we went over the Orwell Convalescent Home. They uh, had the four <laughs> Navy fellows in a convalescent home in Brisbane, in Melbourne, mm. and they took us to the uh, convalescent home there to get up to date with what had happened whilst we'd been away. Mm. And they had a schoolmaster there, a, a Navy schoolmaster. Mm. And he went through, he had books and magazines and told us what had been happening on the war front. And all. Mm. Yeah, a lot of we knew nothing about mm. it. Mm. And uh, he is a uh, Jerry Featherson, nice guy, nice mm. guy. Anyway, the, it's got less than home. There's about another six or eight or ten sailors getting over appendix operations mm. and things like that. Wouldn't talk to us. No. So uh, after the first night, there we said to Jerry, uh, said to them, about four o'clock, don't anybody have a drink in this place? He said, Would you like a drink? We said, We'd love a beer. Mm. He said, Let's go down to the pub down the street. So we did. And we got him half diddly. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, Now, look, why won't those other sailors talk to us back in the thing? He said, Well, I can tell you. I was not to, because we weren't too certain how you mentally stable you were. Mm. He said, but I know he's unstable among you guys as me, <laughs> <laughs> as, as a teacher. Yeah. So he took us back to the uh, college and introduced us. Yeah. 
It was understandable. Uh -huh. he, he wanted to make certain that we were all right before yeah. uh, they left list, you know. Yes. So, uh, no, that was uh, that was very interesting, really, because uh, it was learned a lot because we had been away from news, you know, we hadn't didn't know anything had been going on. Yes. And we really, uh, uh, found that was very good. But after we got married, we uh, uh, yeah, you knew me off the face of me the night I got home, did you? Come on, this is a, this is a good story. Yeah. Well, my wife and accused me of it, <laughs> and I pointed out to my wife that it was leap year, and leap year is a woman that does a proposing. Of course, every man does uh, that. <laughs> so I, I always say to her that she proposed to me. Yeah. You know, we were engaged within the most a week. A week. Yeah. And we were married uh, four months or so. Five months later. Five months. And after our honeymoon, we uh, I had to go to report back to them. So I had to refuse a free to show to the Navy because uh -huh. I wanted to be there when the fellas came home. Uh -huh. uh, Harvey Munro and stuff, and I stayed on in, and Jack uh, uh, Howden and uh, Bob Common stayed, they took their discharges. Anyway, Darby Munro, as a matter of fact, he ended up as a chief uh, uh, take on board a uh, corvette doing a mine sweeping off Queensland at the end of the war and got sunk again. Oh. <laughs> they hit a mine and got sunk. Anyway, yeah. he got out of that one. Anyway, we, uh, I, I had a report back to the Navy after our honeymoon. Oh, honey, honeymoon, what did I do? I read the post, I said, he my up for Bancroft because the Navy said uh, keep in touch in case we need you. I went to the post office and man, you know, so we've been looking for you, uh, Mr. Bancroft, who was wanted badly by the Navy, will you ring them urgently? Uh -huh. So I rang the Navy urgently, I was that's kind of oh what's his name, what's his number? Da, 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 da. Come quickly to me. I said, Oh you rang me, sir. He said, well, you better hurry up, Bancroft. We've got to, you've got to go over to Melbourne and meet the Governor General. You've got to get an aircraft by tomorrow. I said, oh, I've got my wife too. No. Nope. I said, I beg your pardon. I said, I'm on my honey. Man. Yes, well, are you, are you got to go over there. I said, well, I'm not going. Oh, well, ring back tomorrow. <laughs> so I <laughs> rang back tomorrow. And he said, well, we've been in touch with Navy Board, Bancroft. And they have agreed. I've seen the Governor General. And uh, under the circumstances, the Governor General says he'll meet you and your wife when he comes over to Perth next week or next week. Uh, that's it. Uh -huh. So another naval order, I just disappeared, you see. Uh -huh. Anyway, they did come over, didn't they? We had a day, uh, we, we were the VIPs. Uh -huh. The staff car came and picked us up at the house and took us uh -huh. up to the Navy there to meet the Governor General. Uh -huh. That was very, very important. You brought yeah, 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 Dick and Russell and his wife, uh, lovely people. Oh. He, he was, uh, he was not much use for me. You see the little talking? He was shy. He was shy, oh. yeah. Oh. Anyway, the, uh, uh, after all this, uh, uh, honeyman, I had a report back to the Navy and they didn't, they really didn't know what to do with me. Oh. They said, oh, well, we want you to take a, a, some new recruits over to the Flinders Naval Depot. Oh. So the two of us, another able set of stuff, took them to the train and we had to look after them on the train and get them to Melbourne and all. Oh. When we were going uh, uh, around after we got to uh, the naval depot, we saw, saw the re-ballasting, the railway line that came through the depot. I said, oh, ho, ho, ho. I said, like, oh, there's plenty of people want me to do that. He said, oh, oh. Anyway, after I'd done my round of doctrine, Doctor, very important. He said, uh, uh, "Okay, thanks. That's all right." So I said, uh, "Well, they're having a bit of stomach trouble, sir. Oh, these sailors, six months of sea, all their stomach trouble. Next, please." The end of uh, <laughs> there's my welcome home by the doctor there. So I uh, uh, went and uh, around and saw the uh, where I had a sea. 
had to go and report to the petty officer in charge of the party on the railway line oh. on Tuesday. Oh. I went down there and he said, go and get yourself a shovel back off. You know what to do with that? I said, I sure do. Stuck it on the ground and sat on it. Yeah. He said, you trying to be funny? I said, oh, chief, I just finished building one of these through the burn the jungle. Do you think I'm going to do it? here? have another bloody thing. Oh, oh, oh. No, they all knocked off work to find out about this burn of railway. So the next day I was called up before a uh, naval command had been put in charge of charge of returning German prisoners of war. Oh. Not many of them around, but and I was the only Japanese prisoner of war in the whole of the camp, you know, in the whole depot. And uh, he said to me, he said, uh, how are you going, son? I said, I'm all right, sir. I said, I said, I said try to get me to do things I don't want to do. He said, like what? I pointed out, I said, see, they're building ballast in the railway line down there. They want me to help on that. I said, I refuse to do it. I don't blame him. Oh. <laughs> Pressed a button. Oh. In came around and said, take Abel Seaman Bancroft over. Get his gear, and there'll be a staff car around there in 10 minutes, and I'll we'll take him back to come and come home. Oh. And then to the Navy. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I had been to see the general manager of our bank. They said, we'd love to have you back. Yeah. So I, I went back to come and listen home. Yeah. And uh, the one return German prisoner of war was in the, uh, uh, in the uh, convalescent home. Uh, they wouldn't give him a free discharge like they offered me. Yeah. They said, no, we'll put you out on medical grounds. I said, right, give me one of those. This will. <laughs> uh, they said, well, you said you didn't want to get out. And I said, obviously, I'm not needed. Yeah. Uh, I said, I'll, I've got a good job to go. He said, mm. OK, so they gave me a free what they call it, puns, physically unfit for naval service. Uh -huh. Puns. Uh -huh. I never ever applied to a pension for it. Uh -huh. Until some years later I was at a, uh, a prisoner of war reunion in Adelaide and one of the prisoners of war who had a lot to do with the government in New South Wales said, any of you blokes have any trouble with uh, vet affairs? I said, I have no trouble. I don't think I quite understand them. Tell me all about you. He said, when you get back to Perth, go in and see the Veteran Affairs and uh, uh, ask for your pension to be reassessed. Mm. I said, uh, which I did. Mm. And I waited about three months and I eventually got a letter in the mail. You are now totally and perfectly incapacitated mm. for the TPI. Mm. Mm. That I've been put out as physically mm. not fit for naval service and yeah. I, I should have applied for pension on the ground. Yeah. Anyway. Well, his mother kept saying, you're a player for pension. Oh. But I'm busy playing league football, oh. doing all sorts of things. Oh. Uh, so that's where I declined another naval order yes. by not doing any work on the railway line. Mm. So oh. uh, by the time I went back and uh, went back to the bank, then I became a banker instead of a, a uh, able seaman. Service one, yeah. yeah. Arthur, thank you very, very much for that interview. And I think it's time that we brought Merle properly into the scene. I'll just turn this off for a moment while we change spots. Yeah.